the David represents the venerable Stony Brook University, which is we are very happy to have them here, and um, huge academic center. And David is also a very active young man. He is a president of Baldwin Civic Association. So this is your example of a young person taking charge politically which we often do not see, because you will see that there's, when you go to a political room and you just come out of a political room, you would see that older people dominate politics. It's not unusual, given our demographics, but uh, we would like to see more young people being active, and I would like to thank David for joining us. So, the format of our panel will be as follows. I will ask each panelist a question, and they will give some answers. And then I will ask the next question. Overall, we have four questions that I will be asking. So, each one of them will take about two to three minutes to give us an answer. And after that, we will open the panel for your contribution. You can ask questions, you can contribute your opinions, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, and we will see how it goes. Our greatest um, issue, as you might imagine, is the growth of inequality currently in the country. Uh, and the inequality grows amongst different generations. You know, it's not between just rich and poor. Um, but your generation is the most educated. And also, if you're in high school, you're projected to be the most educated generation. But you are the least wealthy. Because of the cost of housing, because of the cost of education, because of um, other social characteristics, for example, 74% of millennials are not married, and marriage contributes to wealth, um, you are projected not to do as well, and uh, really not to do well, uh, also because of stagnation and salaries. So add on to it uh, that we live in a most beautiful area, uh, and a beautiful area with a lot of uh, jobs or with a lot of educated people typically has high cost of housing. Um, it does have high salaries, but as I said to you, salaries has not been risen recently in recent uh, five years. You know, they're stagnating. So, and this wonderful young people, um, they will tell you by themselves, they probably want to stay here, but they might have some solutions how to, for us, how to continue to keep Long Island strong. And strength means having educated people who have good jobs. So let me start with our first question. And that is, what are the issues that you see that young people on Long Island, that young people on Long Island are facing? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Millennials. My name is Jeff Theo, and I'm the founder of the Suburban Millennial Institute, which is a nonpartisan think tank that is dedicated um, solely to finding solutions to the great drain issue on Long Island. I'm also an adjunct professor of political science uh, at SUNY Farmingdale, and so I experience firsthand uh, the, the plight of Millennials on Long Island. And um, a lot, there are a myriad of issues that lead to the mass exodus of young folks from this area. Um, and, but the, the one I want to primarily focus on is, is infrastructure. I, I, I do think that over the, over the past year, I, I, I did this panel, which was wonderful last year as well, and um, I bemoan the fact that there wasn't institutional buy-in from everyone on Long Island. The brain drain was an issue that we had to attack it from a governmental standpoint. And I bemoan the fact that we didn't have an, enough partners in government. Um, and I'm proud to report that this year we absolutely do. I think there was unilateral agreement on both sides of the aisle in both counties. Um, that this is something we absolutely must address. I mean, the Nassau County Comptroller recently issued a report that, that, that talked about the tangible population loss in Nassau County and how that's going to affect us um, economically over the next 10 years. And the number one reason, the number one thing we can do to find solutions is improve our infrastructure um, as sustainably as possible and as effectively as possible. Um, and to do that, we have to, we have to keep eliminating barriers that um, have stymied growth in our downtowns um, and growth in our communities. We need to create a Long Island that is not only affordable, but is, all, but is also exciting, um, and, and so we can blunt um, the loss of young folks here. So we need to find ways to streamline the process by which new projects can be built, and we're, we're doing that. And we also need to, at the same time, create uh, downtown atmospheres um, so young people will want to live here. I, mean, I, I blame my, my reason for my residence, um, continued residence all now for the fact that I live in Babylon Village. Babylon Village is cool and fun. 
Um, for those of you who are not from um, some, some of the walkable downtowns, odds are, by the time you graduate college, you're going to find a really nice apartment in Astoria, Queens, and never leave. Um, and and it, as great as that place is, and as great as, great as all those places is, are, rather, right? we need to find solutions to keep young people here. Um, and I'm actually doing an AmeriCorps year of service um, with the Community Emergency Preparedness Coordinator um, for the Long Island Volunteer Center. And I am one of those young people that just graduated. I graduated in May. Um, and I had to make the choice of whether I wanted to stay on Long Island or away. Um, and so it just so happened that the job that I got was in Long Island. Uh, but I mean, the issues that I'm facing and that I think many young people my age are facing and older than me is the lack of affordable housing. Um, I cannot afford to move out of my house to be in with my family. Um, there are very few rentals that young people can afford or get. Um, many of them are legal rentals. Um, I don't want to buy a house either. I'm not ready to, like, I'm not getting married anytime soon. I'm not going to buy a house anytime soon. Um, and so I, for my needs and for a lot of needs of the students that are graduating from Stony Brook, from SUNY Old Westbury, from all the universities that we have here, is they want to move out and live in downtown in an area where they can kind of not maintain their college life, but in a way maintain the community that they have in college, live in an apartment, um, and do get a job. Um, and so we need jobs in areas where communities can be created and then students can kind of graduate and then move on with their lives and they don't have to move back home, they can afford something. Um, so I think that's one of the primary issues that a lot of young people are facing is just a lack of affordability and a lack of um, infrastructure, as was mentioned, um, the inability to be able to commute by a public transportation to many jobs. Um, and I think owning a car is incredibly expensive and that's what's required for young people to move to Long Island. Um, and so if we increased our public transportation, that would also be, I think, one of the most feasible ways to kind of cause people to want to stay here um, and live in apartments here. Hello everyone, um, my name is Megan, as you know, and I am a therapeutic recreation major at St. Joseph's College. I know that's probably raising a lot of question marks. Basically what therapeutic recreation is, it's using activities with a purpose to bring about an improved quality of life and an improved functional capacity. And at school, you know, when I was preparing for this panel, I'm just one little person. You know, I wanted to find issues that were really representative of not just my own personal struggles as far as staying on Long Island, but my peers as a whole. So I went around campus, I asked people a lot of questions that pertain to today. And at this stage, sounding like a person of color, and that kept coming up was that it's not affordable to stay. And I know you've probably heard that about a million times already today, but it's absolutely true. Everyone that I spoke with, you know, we, we want to stay on Long Island. We think it's a great place. And we want to be here for our families, for all the great things that we have to offer. But realistically, we may have to move. We, you know, jobs are hard to find. One of my friends is majoring in education, and her colleague just went for a job interview that a thousand other people were applying for. That's, you know, only one person's going to get that job, and the rest are going to have to search elsewhere, and how realistic is it that they find a job? And then once they do find a job, housing is expensive. Beyond the housing, you know, your utilities, electricity is really expensive. And there's an initiative going on right now, and I don't know much about it, I just saw it every Day, but um, they're offering like zero percent down to have solar panels put on your house, and I think that's wonderful because it can kind of give somebody that extra little boost to start getting energy and afford a little bit more to stay on Long Island and contribute to the electricity source without going broke. And I think things like that are needed. You know, maybe an increase in public transportation. There's just some, you know, aside from affordable housing. There's a lot of other factors that go into making the transit, the electricity, jobs. So I think we need to keep the full picture in mind and address all these things, which I think is being done. So and I think that's going to be able to start really seeing some change. Can you hear the back? 
Okay, good, because then we always have a concern with the tens that you can't hear. As long as you can hear, we're good. Hi guys, can you hear me okay? Closer? Okay. Uh, my name is David Viana, I'm the president of the Walden Civic Association. I'm a senior at Stony Brook University, uh, studying environmental design, policy, and planning with a minor in environmental studies. I'm graduating next semester. Um, I am also, in addition to the president of the Walden Civic, I am the co-chair for the New York Rising uh, Baldwin Community Reconstruction Committee. So, uh, in both of those capacities, I've had a lot of experience in dealing with the Baldwin community. Uh, both are volunteer work, um, so I've been doing that on top of my regular school work, so it's been a bit challenging. But I've uh, been able to learn a lot about the planning and policy related issues uh, facing not only Baldwin, but Nassau County uh, and the general Long Island region. Um, one of the biggest things that I've been able to notice uh, in many of the meetings that I've attended is I'm generally the youngest person there, um, and by far, I'm, you know, certainly uh, it's not common to see other people uh, my age at a town board meeting. I see a lot of young people. Has anybody here been at a town board meeting before? A couple. How about a county county hearings? Okay, not the young people. You guys should, um, and I know obviously you guys are at school kind of hard to uh, not tell you to skip uh, your school work and go to a meeting, but when you graduate, it's certainly something to look into um, when you go to college, which I have been able to do a couple of times, and that's one of the biggest things. There are not enough young people involved in local government, and in order to enact for change, um, and the things that really matter to us as millennials, we have to participate in government, because the squeaky wheel gets serious, right? So if we're not saying anything, we can't expect much. So that's, um, to me, the most important thing um, is really getting our generation involved in the governmental process. Um, you don't have to be in elected office to participate, but I definitely think uh, that's one of the main issues. And obviously, of those issues, affordable housing, yes, uh, like everybody else has said, is one of the big uh, things, as well as mass transportation uh, and economic development. Okay. David, stay here. I just want to ask you, how old are you? 21. Okay, so David is 21, that's your age, and why don't you tell me how did you decide to run for being the president of the Baldwin Civic Association? What went in your head? Because we want to see how young people make decisions. So uh, when I actually graduated high school, uh, the summer between 